Gina Gain in Jarwin. Hello everyone. I'd like to acknowledge that we're filming today on the traditional lands of the Gumbangi people and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people watching this video today. G'day, my name's Jane Eels. I'm one of the team leaders for the Local Land Services Riverbank Rehabilitation Project which is jointly funded by the New South Wales and Australian governments under the Disaster Recovery Funding Arrangements. The project is to build resilience of flood damaged riverbanks for future flood events. Today we're in Gumma Reserve on the mid north coast of New South Wales with the beautiful Worrell Creek which flows into the Nambucca River behind us. If you own riverfront land, no doubt some of you have seen quite dramatic changes with this year's floods. You might be concerned about the erosion you've seen or the land you've lost. Today we'd like to provide some insight to key concepts of river behaviour and the factors that influence how water flows and how it moves riverbank material along the way. So there's some key concepts to understand about river behaviour. Essentially they're all about stream power and energy. The first one's pretty simple and that is fast versus slow. The faster water flows the more power and energy it has to carry material with it as it goes. So the size of that material might vary from small fine silt and sand through to larger river gravel and rocks or even tree trunks. The faster the water flows, the more power and energy it has to carry larger material. This concept of fast versus slow applies to the three other concepts that we'll touch on. And it might help you if you picture water flowing down a gutter when it rains. So the steeper the gutter, the faster the water will flow. And the, the longer the steeper and longer the gutter is, the faster the water flows down the gutter. And the same concept applies in a river. The next one is straight versus curved. So water flows faster down a straight gutter than it does if it's trying to flow around a bend. If you've ever played slot cars as a kid, you'll know you can go faster down the straights than you can around the bends. And the, Again, the same thing applies in a river. And the last one is smooth versus rough. So water will flow faster down a smooth gutter than when it hits some rough spots that might have leaves piled up or grass growing in it. And you'll notice that that's where the water slows down and, and dirt starts to accumulate there. So that roughness is a critical concept for erosion management. And in a river setting, that roughness is provided by things like ground cover, uh, a root matrix from trees and shrubs of different heights, um, your coarse, coarse bank and bed material, and angular rocks. So don't worry about the fine print. This diagram is just to show you the concept of a balancing scale, where the river is in a state of equilibrium when the bank material on the left is stable and strong enough to stay in place with the power of the river flow on the right. If there was good ground cover, some angular rocks and some woody debris on the bank to increase the roughness, the water will slow down, lose some of its power and deposit some of the material it is carrying. Deposition or aggradation will occur, which is the opposite to erosion. Another key concept for river condition and management is the importance of riparian vegetation. The riparian zone includes the riverbanks and adjoining land. The image on the left shows a riparian zone in good condition. You can see good vegetation cover with deep roots for bank stability to prevent erosion. The trees also provide shade. Cool rivers are more resilient to impacts after floods and provide a better environment for aquatic life cycles. You can see large woody debris from fallen trees for habitat, bank stability and pool depth. You can also see grasses that filter sediment and other pollutants as the runoff flows into the river. The image on the right shows that without vegetation and large woody debris, the channel becomes wider and shallower, banks erode more easily and there's less habitat. Water temperature increases and fewer aquatic species can breed and live in the water. If there's no grass or short grass, that allows pollutants to flow directly into the river. The next image shows the wider the riparian zone is, the more benefits it has. You can see that stabilisation is achieved at a width of 15 metres and flood control at 25 metres. Although that's a generalisation, it is a good guide to best practice. The key concepts we've just covered are a good foundation for understanding river behaviour and erosion management. 
In the next video, we'll look at how these apply to different types of erosion and their causes.